The lunar eclipse is behind and the solar eclipse is April 8th. The two weeks between them can be loaded with energy. So check out my new video analyzing both eclipses, looking backward and forward. It's like a buy me a coffee, but you get a video too. Funastrology.com, right at the top. And thank you for your support. Welcome back to the Fun Astrology Podcast, the Thursday edition. And yes, we're going to get an excerpt today from the Book of the Moon. The audio book is out. Had the privilege of narrating it again for Stephen Forrest. And yeah, I'm hoping that we connect with him on a podcast soon to talk about the Book of the Moon. But I wanted to play you a fun excerpt. In the first part of the book, he spends uh, several chapters setting up some foundational, fundamental, and very interesting information about the moon. Well, some of it is really fun, like this little clip from chapter two. A cool trick. I'm sitting out on a patio during the first week of August with a group of my students. As the sun sets, a perfect first quarter moon is revealed shining high in the sky. After a while, one of the students casually inquires, what sign is the moon in now? That's often a tough question to answer off the top of your head since the moon changes signs every couple of days or so. That's my clue to adopt an all-knowing look. <laughs> I glance up, meditate for a moment, and say, Feels like Scorpio to me. Maybe about the middle degrees. Eyebrows are raised. Am I making this up? How can I know the moon's sign just by looking or feeling? The sun has just set, and there are no stars out yet to give me constellation clues. How do I know that the moon is in Scorpio? Easy. Here's how. Since it is the first week of August, any baby born today will have the sun in Leo toward the middle degrees. That's basic astrology. The moon is in the first quarter phase, so the new moon happened about a week ago and full phase is a week ahead. That means the moon is about one quarter of its monthly cycle ahead of the sun, halfway between new and full. Thus, 90 degrees separate sun and moon, so the moon must be in a waxing square aspect relative to the sun's position in mid-Leo. What sign of the zodiac is 90 degrees past Leo? Voila! Scorpio! Given the early August date and the moon's first quarter phase, that moon has to be in about the middle of Scorpio. Once you understand the order of the zodiacal signs and approximately when the sun enters each sign in its annual cycle, pulling off this trick is easy work. Off the tops of our heads, we generally know the calendar date, at least within a day or two. That gives you the sun's position within two or three degrees. After that, it comes down to understanding something truly elemental. That the phase of the moon is not just about the moon alone. It's actually about the geometrical relationship between the sun and the moon. A full moon on the 4th of July. The sun is in Cancer, and the moon is opposite the sun, so that full moon has to be in Capricorn. The last quarter moon on New Year's Day. Think ahead to 270 degrees, three-quarters of the way around the zodiac, from a point about a third of the way into the sign of Capricorn, where the sun would be on January 1st. That last quarter moon must be in Libra. Now, sometimes, of course, the date is nearing transition when the sun changes signs, and the moon phase looks maybe a couple of days from full. Under these fuzzier conditions, you can't be totally sure about the moon's sign. You have to make your best guess between the two of them. But even saying, hmm, feels to me like late Pisces or early Aries, is enough to give you an air of sagacity worthy of Dumbledore or Gandalf. That this trick often actually startles astrologers says something about how little time we spend under the sky thinking about what we see and how much time we spend in front of our computers. 
You know, if that impressed you, there's a whole 14 hours of that. <laughs> there is. Book of the Moon, available on Audible, and you do not need a subscription. You can buy it one off if you want on Amazon, and you can also get it in Apple Books if you're subscribed to that. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you back for TGI Friday tomorrow. <laughs>